One of the amazing things about working in film was that it was always going to be different. I would never be doing the same thing twice, and that just, that rang my bell. Just by nature of what it is, audition is a competition because someone is going to get work and someone isn't. One of the best pieces of advice I've heard is to walk in with the attitude of, you already don't have the job, so you have nothing to lose by going for what you think is right and what you feel is good. Coming out of university, we focus a lot on the struggle. I didn't really take the time to appreciate the creativity that was around me and, and to enjoy myself. I mean, I would say all your 20s are going to be a big struggle. So appreciate what you have in your life right now. Hello, and welcome to the Final Mile Club podcast. This series explores life after graduation through conversations with industry professionals across the fields of the arts, media, performance, design, and beyond. My name is Sarah Beijung, and I'm the Dean of the School of the Arts, Media, Performance, and Design at York University. Today, we are talking with Sophie. Sophie Rousseau is an internationally recognized artist, UN Habitat Award recipient, philanthropist, and entrepreneur dedicated to impactful arts for social change. She also describes herself as a feminist, humanist, mother, and adventurer. She's worked in arts startups, arts for social justice, and recently formed the Brousseau Art Group. So welcome, Sophie, to the podcast. And thank you so much for facilitating video as well in, in your beautiful studio. Exciting. I thought it was going to be such a cool talk that it deserved to have video as well as audio. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, <laughs> I, and super fun to be here um, and, and just great to see you as always. Same here. Um, so in, for those of you who have not tuned in before and, and for Sophie, um, the Final Mile podcast is really a a resource for students, um, mostly from the, the School of the Arts, Media, Performance, and Design at York, or AMPD, but, but widely available. So really for emerging artists as they're getting their start, beginning professional careers, and to get advice from a whole range of folks who followed all different kinds of career paths. And I thought your path has been particularly interesting and would be really exciting and, and, and perhaps informative for, for our students. So... Um, uh, so I thought I would I would sort of start. So thinking about this in, in an educational context, um, I know that you you often describe and, and talk about education as crucial and and really critical to success. I'm curious then, what did you study at university, and what has been your career path then, since then? Well, I would say it's been very varied. <laughs> I studied international affairs uh, when I was in France. And then I did a bachelor's in wealth management. So as you can see, <laughs> this is not really where I am in life now, uh, but it did give me a really strong basis, I would say, on the communication side, um, a few bases, you know, in marketing and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, it's, it's not necessarily what I studied. I wish I would have listen to my mom and I would have studied arts um, and I wish I would have been as courageous as your students. Uh, but I guess, you know, it took me um, a longer time to really find my voice. So how, how did you find your way to the arts? Because today you, you're producing regularly, you're yeah. showing all over the world, you're using arts as a platform for all kinds of communications and, and to draw attention to really important issues. What's what, how, did, how did you get to that spot? Um, it was a very long road because I really never considered art to be a viable path in the sense I thought I was going to be a doctor when I was a kid. Then, you know, I thought I was going to be a banker. Then, like, I didn't really know. I was just trying to see, you know, what would work for me. And I've tried interning at places and I, I was pretty miserable. Um, and I would actually be drawing and sketching during my classes. I remember my physics teacher telling me, Sophie, physics is not for you, but you might want to consider art school. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, what is she saying? <laughs> um, so, yeah, like even when I was younger, I did not see art as a viable career path, uh, which was very unfortunate, uh, truly. However, so I, you know, traveled the world and I was working a whole lot of jobs. And when I was in New York at that time, I was financially comfortable and I had a lot of free time. Um, so that's when I started painting. And then 
painting was actually making more money than my bartending job. So I had more and more opportunity to do really fulfilling collaborations with, uh, with friends. Um, and then I would say the dimensions of social impact truly came to me after I had my son and I took a good look around and I realized, wow, you know, what is this legacy that I'm leaving, you know, for my son and all the other children that are being born? Um, is there anything that I can do? Like, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I can't take us to Mars, um, <laughs> which I thought would have been really cool. Um, but maybe I can help, you know, with solutions. And I think that was a, something that really made me take art even more seriously than even just the fact of, okay, I actually can make a living uh, from my art. Uh, what I really liked was the superpower of collaboration. And the moment that you get people to collaborate, they're involved, even if it's just a little bit, then, you know, if they've been involved in an exhibition that's about climate change, then they don't feel so detached from it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, like, to me, that's really the superpower, like the, the capacity to talk to just about anybody, regardless of their walks of life, you know, um, their religious background, it, it just doesn't matter. You, you experience art and you feel something so then you can have a very different conversation. Um, and what, what makes a good collaboration? Because you've done, you know, you've worked with business people, you've worked with yeah. politicians, you've worked with musicians and artists and, and lots of religious different kinds institutions. of institutions. <laughs> religious institutions. What, what makes a good collaboration in your, in your um, opinion? I love collaborating with friends. It's always the most impactful, uh, probably, I think, because it's always authentic. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you make friends while um, meeting somebody in a business setting. So, you know, that works as well. But I think there has to be that human connection, the alignment of just values and impact that we want to have. So finding people who share your values and maybe also your enthusiasm for the project or for the for the yes. issue. Yes, I'm looking for somebody with whom I would have common ground, probably on values, but, you know, their point of view is so very different that it just uh, makes the collaboration more rich. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds very um, abstract when we talk about it like that. Um, but, you know, people always say, like, sometimes it just starts with having everybody sitting at the table and I think that's that really works yeah just the fight having very different people uh talking on one point of view we have very different solutions and very different ideas so that's why I really loved it by art so so getting a diverse group of folks together but yeah. you know finding a kind of balance between commonality shared experience yes. shared values but also who bring different things to the table and then uh, I also heard you talk about authenticity. Yes, and and sort of, and what does that what does that look like for you? How do, how how do you know when something is authentic or not? Well, I know when it's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which um, I would say, you know, like for me, everything is experienced. I would say as a gut feeling, mm -hmm. um, but I would yeah. Well, sometimes when you try to force it and when you're just going through the motions. Um, doesn't mean that you cannot do good work, but is it going to be your best work? Not necessarily. And mm -hmm. in my career path, it's always been the most surprising collaborations that ended up working the best financially and having the best impact even on a social level. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always a collaboration between friends like, oh, wow, you can do that. Well, I can do that. And I know those people who do this. Let's do it. And next thing you know, everything is selling out and we're collaborating, we're collaborating with even more artists and we're having actual impact um, or even just, you know, raising awareness on uh, an issue that maybe people don't necessarily know about. Sure. Um, so yeah, like that's yeah. usually the best. <laughs> and so if, as you, so I want to take you back to when you were starting out, right? Yes. And um, and it can be when you were fresh out of university and kind of finding your way towards art, or it can be, you know, thinking about when you 
you know, we're in New York and all of a sudden art became a viable option and, yeah. and you realized that you could you know, do this, make yeah. a living at it, um, uh, have some fun with it. And what, what do you wish you had known or, or done then? In other words, like what, what would, what would advice be or what, what do you wish you had focused on? Or if there's something you would do differently, either coming out of school or at that kind of transition into your art practice? I would say trust your gut because mm-hmm. um, I listened, you know, my whole life, you know, you have to have a proper career. You have to just, you know, no, you have to do this first to be, you know, happy or, you know, you're never going to have a good life if you follow that path. Like, I would say just, yeah, follow your gut, mm-hmm. follow. If I had done that earlier, I probably would have made more. But at the same time, I'm a firm believer that all of my experiences shaped um, who I am and, mm-hmm. you know, Murphy's Law. You talk a lot about collaboration. Mm-hmm. What are things that you look for in collaborators? Or if you're, you know, we talk a lot uh, about hiring. So if you're looking yeah. at, at hiring or bringing on an intern, what are some qualities that you look for? What do you, uh, particularly if you if you don't know folks already, what are you looking mm-hmm. for in, in your collaborators? I would say number one would be integrity. So, mm. so long as I can trust you to come in my creative space and, you know, it's it's fairly intimate. It's not, you know, like a, a regular business uh, place where people, you know, you can still keep... Uh, a, a separation between your private life and your in whatever you're doing at work. Right. Um, so I would say, you know, I would have to trust that the persons coming in um, will always have integrity. And to me, that means that I think they'll always consider um, my interest as much as theirs whenever mm-hmm. working together. So, you know, there would be that. I, you know, good intentions, like so long as you're always... Um, and by good intentions, I mean like enthusiasm and and motivation. As long as you want, we're not expecting perfection. Nobody, nobody is perfect, and you don't have to wait to be perfect to start. I think mm-hmm. that can be a mistake, maybe that younger people could do, um, or all less less experienced people would do. They feel like, wow, you know, like I have to. Before I start, everything has to be planned and, you know, everything has to be perfect. Actually, no, mm-hmm. you just have to start and then you can fix it as you go, which I think is a very entrepreneurial trait. Um, so, so long as you're willing to learn and you're enthusiastic and you accept constructive uh, criticism, because that can be also something, you know, accepting feedback and just moving on and building up on it. Yeah. Uh, that works really well. Being a really strong communicator too, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Even though, like, I, I can still, you know, see if things are going well, not going well. It works better with words. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, for sure. Uh, okay, so integrity... Uh, enthusiasm and uh, and communication. Yes. Um, uh, and and what about like work style? Like, do you are, are you looking for people who are more flexible or more? I mean, do you do you find yourself gravitating or being successful with people who are more rigid or or who follow plans? Like, what's what's your oh, work people style? People who are rigid would be frustrated with me. Okay, fair. <laughs> Um, however, I have a very specific sense of organization, mm-hmm. uh, you know, otherwise it's organized chaos, uh-huh. um, which means that also like I'm a mom and I have several businesses and I'm still, you know, doing, you know, charitable work, like wherever I can do, where, whenever I can help, whenever I, I can have impact, I do it. And I can't do it if I don't have an organized, you know, inbox, like I'm, I'm infamous for having several email addresses, which I know you know. <laughs> I do, I do. I, I, I use them all. I just, I just line I know, them I know, up. I know, I know. Yes. It's just because that way, you know, one email address is for that specific business. Sure. That email address, you know, I have one that's just for personal stuff and, you know, like my my son's kid uh, school stuff. So, um, like, I like to keep things organized. It yeah. gives me uh, the capacity to deal with so many things in one day. 
Uh, so like they would have to be very flexible, but still organized. <laughs> so but the other thing I'm hearing you say that I think is really useful for, for uh, you know, our, our students or, or anybody starting out is, is also to think about the balance between organized and, uh, and inspiration and yes. sort of the, I, I think everybody puts that in a different place, perhaps, you know, how, but, but that it's. But when you're going to manage a number of things, and I think most yes. artists, uh, whether they're musicians or designers or, you know, freelance graphic artists or, you know, whatever, we all have multiple things that yes. we're running simultaneously. So figuring out what our organizational structure has to be, yeah. I think, what I think system, makes a lot you know, of sense. What system, what system works? I mean, you can see my, my all of my painting, um, all of my paints. Uh, just right there, they're all organized by colors. Yeah. Not because, I mean, it's nice to look at, but also it's just, it's easier when I'm about to start a new painting. That way I see, oh, I can put this with that and, and that way. And then I set them aside and I start my painting like that. As opposed to have everything laying around and not knowing, um, like I've tried, doesn't work. Yeah. So that would be, but, you know, to each his own. Exactly. Um, your, your studio is, I'll just say as a, as a sort of side note, is a really interesting mix of organized <laughs> and, um, and, and, well, I wouldn't even say chaotic, but just like, um, uh, like free structured flowing. and, and, and free flowing. I think yeah. that's a good, I think that's a, a really good dis description. Um, what sort of thinking about, uh, about again, your kind of trajectory, mm -hmm. You've been really successful in a number of different spaces. You are doing, as you pointed out, a number of different projects and, and businesses and, and, you know, not the least of which is parenting and, you know, <laughs> yes. raising young humans, right, <laughs> which is also really critical. Um, that takes a certain amount of time management yes. uh, skill. What What is some advice that you have for... Um, for students, for emerging artists, for, you know, creatives who are coming, you know, out of, out of universities, getting started in their career, you know, sort of looking back as well as just mm -hmm. what you know now, what's, what's, uh, what's some advice that you might have for them? Well, I would always go back to my trust your gut advice. Mm -hmm. um, Cause at the end of the day, nobody knows more about you than you. So mm -hmm. trust that at the same time, still take constructive criticism and, you know, grow. But I would always say, trust your gut. And then going back to the organization uh, thing, because everybody sees, you know, successful artists and they're just like, oh, wow, that person is just so talented and bam, you know, they got put on. Actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of work that came behind and many, many, many times they failed and then they succeeded. Uh, I mean, everybody's different, but I know quite a lot of, you know, successful artists in different disciplines and it's always the same thing. They're really hard workers. They, they keep on doing whatever they know they are supposed to do until they get it right. So they fail many times until they get it right. That's actually something I'm trying to teach my son that, you know, don't get upset when you fail. You know, you're one step closer to success. Keep on failing until mm -hmm. until it works. Um, I think it was, was it um, uh, the person who founded Starbucks? I think he got turned down like 50 times before he finally got alone and look at him now. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like... It's a very unglamorous analogy, but it, it's the reality of it. And also, I would say, build a great team. Because um, you see the artist, you see the art, but truth is, it took me so much time to find a team, you know, that I trusted. They're my soul family, you yeah. know, rather than just, like, a team is, like, so underwhelming for what they truly do for me. Uh, they enable all of my creativity. Um, and sometimes they direct it too, saying, okay, like you're going a bit crazy there. This is not going to happen. This could work there. Uh, so I would say finding a team and finding people that, again, going back to friends and collaborations. Yeah. Um, but we always see the one artist we don't always see like the 10, 20 people in the background that are just enabling mm -hmm. all of this because 
even when you're creating something, um, I, you know, it's not just, okay, I created something great in my basement. You know, you still have to sell it. You still have to let people know that it exists and this mm. is what it means and what it stands for and what you could do with it. Um, and that's a whole other art. So usually because it takes a lot of energy for me to to be surrounded by a lot of business people mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of every time that I need to sell something or market something. Um, I know that like whenever I'm doing this, I cannot be creative at the same time. So I usually find a few select, very well connected people um, that really align with me. And usually like they're in charge mm -hmm. of finding the right collaborations. Like And like some of those people are really close to me uh, and they will say, you know, they're, and they're just constantly connecting with people because that's what they do. And they're right. actually, they're actually, you know, studying business <laughs> most of the time. Um, so I so would say, yeah. It, so, so if I can just kind of recap, so, yeah. so trust yourself. Yes. Um, and, 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 and I think, you know, it can be really hard to stay true to yourself, but yeah. But, but if you're committed, I, I think you know that's something we've heard from a lot of folks uh, on the on the on the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, work hard, take take criticism. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know, um, I love the idea of um, keeping at something until it's until it's right, and not yeah. being afraid to to fail repeatedly. Yes, um, I think that's actually a really interesting place where entrepreneurial approaches and art in, intersect. Right, this yeah. idea of of experimentation, of play to a certain extent, yes. of being willing to try something really unconventional. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's awful. Maybe it's the next greatest thing that no one's mm -hmm. seen. So yeah. um, I think I think that's a really good one. But also, I, the, what I hear you in in the most recent thing is is um, about building a really good team is to look for people who fill in the things that you don't do or yes. who bring different experiences and different. Uh, perspectives and different insights, you know, different skills to to the table, which I think makes a makes a lot of sense. Also, um, and you know, clearly you've had some really significant success of of building some of these great teams and finding them together and 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 really trusting your collaborators. And yes. So congratulations for for <laughs> all of you. that. Um, uh, I'm curious. Uh, I'll be curious to see where what the Brousseau Art Group does next, and and kind of what your vision is is for that. But um, before we sort of conclude, is there something that you wish I had asked you, or that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get a chance to get to in this? Well, I think I actually said um, find the team, but I think I I already talked about it because I think um, there's this myth about art that the artist stands alone and only the artist does. Mm -hmm. um, but if you take, for example, Salvador Dali, his wife Gala was the one, she was his agent. She was the one who facilitated um, everything, you know, for him from events to exhibitions. Um, so I think that the team is not, you know, it's not highlighted enough. It's mm -hmm. not that they need mm -hmm. to be highlighted, but I find that we don't really tell people, um, well, we don't really tell artists that they really need a good team. It it works better that way. So art is a team sport. It really is. Okay. All right. That's that's excellent. So what are the next uh, the next steps for the Brousseau Art Group? Well, like what's coming up? Yes. Well, I actually partnered with. We started as collaborators and now she's one of my closest friends, uh, Mercedes, you've met her. And I'll be painting and she will be licensing the art. <laughs> so anything, you know, that will be um, like home decor, uh, you know, wallpapers. And every time, you know, just like with everything that we do, we will be you know, creatively finding a way to have some social awareness component mm -hmm. um, because we are both uh, very strong believers that, you know, if you take care of the community, then the community will take care of you. So we want to foster just, you know, a, a very empathetic, I think, 
that's something that I love about art too. We can reconnect with our empathy. Mm-hmm. Um, so just foster an empathetic uh, community that, you know, whatever happens to someone else, you're not fully detached from it. So just making sure that we have a healthy and happy and thriving, growing community. Well, that sounds really, really exciting. So Sophie Brousseau and Brousseau Art Group work coming soon to uh, some some venue near you, right? Yes. <laughs> um, Sophie, thank you so much for, for spending time and, and sharing your experiences and your insights with us. I really... Thank you. It's, it's great to hear, and I wish you all the best in, in your new venture. Thank you, Sarah. You've been listening to the Final Mile Club Radio, a production of the School of the Arts, Media, Performance, and Design at York University, with generous support from Jennifer Ivy Bannock and members of the Dean's Advisory Committee. You can hear more exciting episodes by subscribing to this series or joining the AMPD Final Mile Club on LinkedIn. Do you have a burning question about life after graduation? Email us at fmcr at yorku.ca and we will be sure to pose it to a future guest. Thanks for listening, and remember, although the way may be long, you don't have to go it alone.